What's up and welcome to Champions of Lore, a show about all the kick-ass stories. We have some Isle Champions, coolest campaigns, and characters. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Twitch.tv slash CNE Games, or later on your favorite podcast service, B. Dave Walters and Adam Evans talk about all the Idol Champions lore that's fun to know about. If you're this live in the chat, you can leave a question that I, Trevor Best, will ask them later in the show. But guess what? We're going to be doing a lot more questions today. So b- <laughs> before we get to that, Aaron, B. Dave, take it away. Hi, I'm Erin M. Evans. I'm the author of forthcoming Empire of Exiles and Brimstone Angels, a sick book series set in the Forgotten Realms featuring three of your favorite idol champions, champions Frida, Havlar, and Mahan. I'm also a content designer for idol champions and I play Cecilia on Dungeon Scrawlers. B. Dave Walters, I say words about things, including tomorrow morning for the first, <gasps> and I said first ever <laughs> D&D Direct, 9 a.m. Thursday. On the Dungeons and Additionally Dragons, Twitches, and the YouTube bitches. Yep, and he knows nothing about the the thing that he already recorded, so don't ask him a damn I know nothing. Not only do I know all of it, I've seen all of it, and I'm just not going to tell you. But in 24 hours... Red dots coming up. It's true. It's true. It's true. Brian Perry yeeting that one javelin like the Spartans from 300. You know, just from like... <laughs> I was I was gonna say that uh, yeah. that Chris Perkins was the one with the the sniper rifle and his little dog Milo is the one that's like yeah. calling the wind shots. <laughs> sure. Go for the eyes, Milo. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be gonna be quite a thing. I think you'd be very happy. Yep. Yeah. So uh, we thought it would be fun. Uh, you know, we get a lot of questions on this show, and thank you so much for asking those questions. But we don't always have a chance to get to all of them, so we thought it would be fun to go back and grab some of them and talk about them today. Uh, so I went back through all the episodes, and there was a lot. Good <laughs> work. Um, and tried to grab ones that I thought would be fun to do. But, at the, uh, but you know, if you're here right now, it doesn't mean you can't ask questions. Uh, but... I, I think it would be, it's kind of fun to just uh, make this one a free for all. Ask questions. It, we, we, the, the, the topic could be whatever uh, you want that is still appropriate. This is a PG thirteen freaking uh, you know show, so don't 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 be don't be don't. I see you. I see don't, you there. Don't 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 make me don't make me pull this chat over. <laughs> don't make me pull this chat over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, ask your questions. Our awesome mod, Jordan, will grab them, put them in a little text doc. Uh, th- funny enough, the same doc that I went through to grab all these questions. So let's uh, le- let's let's take a... Oh? We're just going to ask for a capital question in front of it, right? Make it easy for you? Just yeah, 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 yeah. If you can put question, colon, and then ask a question. If you, if you put a statement after a question, you are a liar. Uh, <laughs> There's one thing I cannot abide by. <laughs> Statements um, pose this question. Uh, okay, we're going to go all the way back to... Oh, we got a hype train going. Oh my gosh, thank you. Hey! Um, so we're going to go all the way back to episode two. The Frozen Whoa. North, when what? I did a better job at naming these episodes. Um, <laughs> this is from oh, Nick. Oh, two with mighty <laughs> yes. Yes. I think it was. Ever vigilant, yes, he has been lying in wait this entire time <laughs> for when he would be needed again. Just in all the snow drifts. <laughs> everybody's always like, why is there a snow drift behind you, Dave? And I'm like, it's where mighty Trovis lay in wait. He's like, but but it's summer in, in L.A. Um, Trovis, Trovis seasons. Yeah, he's a seasonal uh, seasonal dragon, born. Uh, so this first question is from Netherwave eighty three. So now that alignment doesn't really uh, you know matter as far as like uh, you know creatures, uh, there's no assigned one. Um, have there ever been any clear examples of dragons that do not follow their usual? Uh, alignment stance so like black dragons that like save a, a village or silver dragons uh that use uh that, that basically become bad guys i feel like we did answer this question yeah that's okay um, we can answer it again well we'll answer I mean, it again there, there's there's been at least one it was still bolded so well, well one of the <laughs> one of the things that that put me on the map was my being very much adamant that uh intelligent creatures behave intelligently and there is no correlation between race and morality because it gets really problematic really quickly even yep. with uh, monsters and things and the the problem even deeper than that is you can have a creature that does the right thing for the wrong reason you know that it's uh you can have a red dragon that that aggressively protects everyone in a village because it's like those are my little slave people <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
You know what I mean? And it does everything. They, they bring thing. me food. Yeah. They they bring me they bring me things. Exactly. Why would I want them to die? They're my ant farm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I just like watching them. You know what I mean? So it 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 um and and also it's just very lazy storytelling when yeah. you're like I'm attacking because I'm evil. You're like okay, <laughs> you know it, it. You know, and also just uh, something that is lawful good is a creature that that values law and values goodness well goodness is subjective uh Mm -hmm. if you've seen any of the charity games i do i do this all the time where i'll have like um um hyperions and solars and good creatures doing terrible things that they're like no it's the right thing to do and you're like but it isn't though did you guys not read the laws yeah yeah Mm -hmm. exactly let's let's um so more specifically and i don't have all the names on hand but um, the lore of the Dragonborn uh, of Timanther is that they're from another plane called Abir, uh, which is the twin plane tutorial. And in Abir, uh, you have this succession of terrible people being in charge. So first the Titans are in charge, and then their dragon steeds rise up and overthrow them and kill them all. And then the dragons are terrible, and they rule, and they enslave everybody who is not a dragon and create the Dragonborn to serve them. And those dragons come in all types, so there are you know, uh, wicked chromatic dragons, but also, you know, metallic dragons who are not actually acting in the best interests of the people they've uh, decided they're gonna rule. Um, because again, like you, you know, it's a lot of a lot of the alignment stuff comes down sometimes to a point of view thing mm-hmm. um, very easily. And so, you know, if you're like, no, no, see, we're the superior race and we tell everybody what to do and then you do it and you'll be happy you did it. Like maybe you do think you're lawful good at that point. Yeah. Um, but yeah. eh, those, a lot of people are going to think you're terrible and rise up and overthrow you. So, yep. um, but I know I wrote a lot of those little dragonborn ancestor stories and they were not all uh, chromatic dragons being terrible. There were silver dragons being terrible and gold dragons being terrible in there too. <laughs> all right. Um, I, 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 so I put this next one in here just cause I, I got a big kick out of it. This is from episode four, uh, which is the episode where we talked about Penelope. Um, uh, and this is from, uh, Wyverny Wynn. <laughs> so what is this show? <laughs> I've not seen this before. <laughs> what is this show? <laughs> what even is? Like Let 70 you know. plus episodes in. What is the wait, answer to this question? Even? Wait. Isn't this like, are, isn't this 75? Is this today? Uh, 70 plus because we stopped putting numbers. 73. No, I was about to say, is this our 75 Q&A extravaganza? Extravaganza. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah, not we'll, quite. We'll, we'll let you know in episode 75. I'm sure we'll figure it out by then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I think this is just uh, this is a show about three friends that get together and laugh about D and D lore for about an hour. <laughs> we do things and then we make fun of it in a yeah, loving abs- way, though. Absolutely. Um, okay, this one uh, comes from episode eight, the Brimstone Angels, and is very appropriate because of Tamantha that you were just talking about there. Oh, cool. Uh, this is from uh, Victor Bang. Just I don't know how to say that. It's from Victor. Uh, hey, Victor. <laughs> going back to Tamantha, would the new gods have celestial warlocks, or would they have proper clerics? I have strong feelings about this. <laughs> no, most dose. Yeah, it's no, just the terms no, of your agreement. No. <laughs> clerics gods have clerics there we go done deal i mean i can objectively point to a thing where that's not the case depends on the terms of your agreement i'll blow your mind even further you can be a cleric warlock of the same god oh god you're already so- answer. you're already oh. jumping ahead there you're jumping ahead <laughs> but i mean but by, by Is definition be that kind of thing where i get mad about warlocks and then b dave just ignores me and keeps having his opinion Is that what we're doing first of all i love you dearly and everything you say and do is correct um except this <laughs> hey Hey, you are going with the spirit of the law. I'm going with the word of the law. So Where's see our bullshit? previous comment about <laughs> a good, lawful good person can still be a tyrant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, this is this one comes from episode nine, the Sunblight of Ten Towns. Again, I was much better at writing uh, episode titles back then. Uh, this question goes I from mean, crazy. When you get north of forty, it's hard to be clever anymore. It's true. No. It's true. No. Uh, yeah, this is hard. from uh, 
crazy Matt captain. So my brother and I are looking for lore books of D and D to learn more about the world. Any suggestions beyond Aaron's books? I was about to say brimstone angels. <laughs> Six foot saga said in the forgotten realms. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's like Brimstone Angels, book. six book series. I never got around. Like that's the second gun. It's yeah, the it's six the book series. Gun. I love you, mm-hmm. Dave. I got you. The, the so the, this is the question: is there's there's lots of ways and lots of places to learn about the lore. Mm-hmm. Um, there's source books, so adventures and campaign settings, and then there were also sort of um, for a long time they in like second and third edition they would create um sort of more specific setting so you want to learn about the lake of steam here's a book that includes that you want to learn about the unapproachable east here's a book that uh goes over that um and so that you can delve more deeply into the lore of those areas there's also fiction which gives you you know a good story and interesting characters while they move through that space um so it kind of depends on the way you want to digest it um i the the we we reference the wiki a lot. The wiki has uh, if you go down to the bottom, it will tell you where those references come in. It is a volunteer fan created thing, so there's not like there there's definitely holes, right? Um, but maybe you can fill in some of those holes. Uh, I like to use that for you know you go down to the bottom and you find the the sources, and then you can track down those items. Uh, a lot of the older books are available on like Drive Through RPG um and the the novels are all available in ebook and audiobook uh very easily yep so it kind of depends on where specifically you want the lore about uh there you know there's a lot of lore about icewind dale because there's a lot of books uh, about Jurits, and that's kind of his home base mm-hmm. um there's a lot less books about the lake of steam <laughs> i will say the a good place to find those source books now is uh dm's guild they have a lot of the older oh, source the books on uploaded too? on there. Yeah, and nice. they uh, and they appropriately uh, give content warnings when they're like, "Hey, this isn't yeah. great now." <laughs> um, so so that that's that's also good. I would say that personally, yes, everything Aaron said and does is correct always. <laughs> Once again, uh, I personally think uh, the fiction is the best place for it because I find in the source books and in the adventures, you're like, here's a place, here's Barovia. Here's some aspects of Barovia. Here's Strahd, Strahd's bad. Strahd should probably go. Well, hope it turns out okay, you know? (laughs) And it's almost like it's a menu, whereas the fiction is a meal that has been served, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. so you get more of like, well, this is what happened. Yeah. Uh, versus here is the backdrop and context for what might happen. Um, yeah. So because a lot of the lore and thing is it makes sense in retrospect and then it changes and then it changes based on who's talking about it at the time. Mm-hmm. And remember, the Forgotten Realms is over like 50 years old. So there's directly contradictory stuff at times. And abundant. I mean, and Mithras died four or five times. And I mean, yeah, it's all... I, I do think it all kind of came up in parallel with, although the comic book industry pre- uh, is before the, the birth of Dungeons and Dragons as we know it, a lot of the like dying and coming back and this is destroyed, but it wasn't. <laughs> and, and all, it all, that, that kind of storytelling all kind of came up in parallel. Put it like that. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. This, this next one is from episode 15. Let's go to Chult. Uh, this is from Operator Nostrix. What is your favorite creature from Cholt and why? Ooh. I know my answer Zombie right off the bat. Zombie dinosaurs. Ooh, Specifically, Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Zombie Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> the, the, they, so, someone had a great day because <laughs> they were like, they came to the wizard's office and they're like, check this out. We w- what if we had a zombie T Rex and everyone, went, ooh, and they're like, no, 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 no wait, wait, wait. And then it vomits more zombies, and they're like, "That's that's when on the one side of it you have the pitch for the zombie T Rex, which is like a very poorly hand drawn like stick figure zombie T Rex, <laughs> and on the other side of that paper is your letter of resignation if they say no. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're like one way or another, I'm I'm submitting this paper. Right if, uh, yeah. if if you're not down for this, we can't work together anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> What about you, Aaron? Um, I don't know. That's hard to top. 
It was a good one. It was, it was very good. good. Yeah. The, the, I, the Chult, Chult just has a lot of good ways of killing you. <laughs> I feel like, are they, yeah, let me check, because I, I think they're in Chult, but I'm, I'm ready to be surprised and find out that's not the case. Which ones? Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Guralin. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like a four-armed angry yeah. gorilla. And there's yep. a zombie version know. of it on Chult, too. Yep. yep. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yep. hey look the wiki's got a picture of a Guralin zombie that's carrying a brain in a jar <laughs> I love that combo brain in a jar big fan of those I mean also uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> oh Stuart you know uh, uh, shout out to our homie yeah um, <laughs> and uh, you know there's also a Sarah poking around uh, oh yeah out there, out there in the uh, out there in, in the uh, in, in the, the tombs too mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this next one comes from episode 16 the chunky boy <laughs> uh, this is from uh, sun tiger 745 uh, is there a kobold like race descending from dinosaurs the way that kobolds are descended from dragons interesting because I, I know, know there's the there's the uh, what uh, dragon bait is I can't what, what is that is a saurial which That's I think saurial. actually the saurials are kind of like uh dragonborn dinosaur dragonborn yeah. yeah um so i feel like that's not quite the thing but i i i, I love i love uh but it might be close. dragon bait dragon bait's my like i i i need more of of that that creature type that there was a thesaurial yeah i i i, Sorry, I, I need yep. I need more of that because I freaking love Dragon Bait. He's so good. <laughs> you know what i did not realize but apparently saurials are not native to Toril. Yeah, that that I I, I don't that. I don't know if they've actually said how Dragon Bait made his way into uh Cholt, um because he's just suddenly traveling around with uh Arch of Simber. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That that was just sort of his thing. He just went yep. places. And Sariels can't talk. Yep. Yeah. I, they communicate through scent, and I had a lot of fun doing that with <laughs> when I played yeah. that game. <laughs> Better say I too communicate communicate through scent. <laughs> <laughs> It's very easy to tell when B Dave wants you to go away. Um, yeah, I, I I think that's. I don't know if there's anything. I don't think there's any other kind of humanoid dinosaur race. There's there's different sub races of the saurials. Um, are saurials come through the Lost Vale? Are, sar are saurials even in? I mean. I mean, they're not not in fifth edition, but are I are think they actively in Dragon, fifth edition? Dragon Bait is listed as a yeah, fifth, he's fifth the, edition. I, I think he's mm. the only um, one though. Mm. This hasn't by four. Wait, what year are we in? Fourteen seventy nine is. We're fourteen ninety. We're fourteen ninety two. Yeah. yeah, we're in the fourteen nineties. <laughs> this says yeah. that. Uh, there's multiple settlements throughout the Lost Vale, but with the return of Netheril in fourth edition, they uh, took control of Tarkledale and the Dragonfloak were driven, driven underground. Um, so there's not, um, but except for, except for Dragon Bait. Mm -hmm. I love okay. this quote. Only two things smell as good as fresh, fresh baked bread. Fresh baked bread and angry sorials. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was like back in the two E days. I was super into Sariels because I mean, again, you're like, let me get this straight. I'm gonna be a wizard, but my wizard's a dinosaur. Yep, yep, yep. works out. Sign, um, sign me up for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, let's see. Oh, oh so oh. the fact that there's lots of different kinds of Sariels, I think, means you could be. You could make a, a sorial subrace that's like those little chicken dinosaurs <laughs> that kill the guy yep. in Jurassic Park. C compies. Pro compies. compies. Yeah. Yep. Pro compies. Freaking compies. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This next one is from episode 29, The Domains of Dread. Mm. Uh, and this is from uh, Cassius335, who I, I, I see is in the chat. Um, hey. So are there domains of delight and how do you get, how do you get there? They're in the Feywild, and they're also terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, uh, Cassius did say for this, yes, I might be thinking of ice cream and milkshakes right now. <laughs> and they're also terrible. terrible. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. You get there and you're like, this is super happy fun place and everything is bright and shiny and like the flowers are blooming and the squirrels can talk and the strawberries the size of my head and oh, an assassin vine. Ah. <laughs> oh no, okay. oh, yeah. no the assassin vine made out of licorice. <laughs> yeah, an assassin vine made out of licorice. Exactly. Actually, it's, it's either liquor, it's it's either uh, Twizzler or Red Vine, whichever one you hate. Because it's true. Yep. It's true. Can't like both, apparently. Only the wrong answer. Yes. (laughs) You can like both. You just shouldn't like one of them. (laughs) I feel like we should not disclose. No, no, no. We're here just so we can all stay friends. You know, I pushed it on the warlock thing. So I'm going (laughs) to keep to myself. Uh, so this is uh, episode 31 where we talked about wizards. Uh, this question comes from uh, Sudian. Uh, question uh, exploring further: How uh, how do good wizard how can good wizards equal or exceed liches in power? Uh, is it as simple as having friends? I think that's a I think that's going to <laughs> Elminster. <laughs> yeah, the power, power friendship. Of friendship. Yep. <laughs> well, especially. I mean, be- oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I mean, if you have friends, then you have a posse, which means you have the powers of multiple people, which is how you defeat a lich, right? Mm -hmm. That is true. I mean, but it's not not true. Or be like a 12 year old chosen one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that, that's the the yeah. I mean, being a lich is all about being afraid to die, but like. Elminster and Mordenkainen just kind of live because they feel like it. So it's like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of ways to just you know keep going. Yeah, be like, mm, thought about dying, don't wanna. <laughs> um, the the next episode, I I grabbed uh, questions. I actually grabbed uh, three questions from because I'm a monster. It was our warlocks and packs episode. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so this came this from. My answer is: Are you chaotic or are you lawful? Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, this question comes from normal underscore lady underscore regular, com- completely normal and regular person. Um, since you mentioned paladin slash warlocks, uh, I'm really interested in that multi class combo. One makes a vow and the other makes a pact. Do you try to make those two promises uh, the same force, literally or thematically, uh, or use them to flesh out two sides of the character? I, I mean, played a pal. Oh, you go ahead. No, 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 please. You started first. <laughs> no, but I saw a thought glimmer into your eyes, and I love it when your eyes gleam with mischief. So please <laughs> proceed. <laughs> Especially about warlocks. Paladin warlock. Uh, when I did it, I had a uh, paladin who had the oath. What's the real paladin the oath that's in the basic rules? I forget now. Uh, answer? No. no. Uh, uh, protection? Wait, yeah. no. No, that's World of Warcraft. No. <laughs> Yo, um, anyway, you're right. <laughs> yeah. It already, she already had a kind of a complicated thing because she swore a, she has a paladin of the god of basically law and order and paladining um, of empire. And uh, she kind of got chosen by the the goddess of the crossroads, the moon god. Uh, and so her, her oath was shifting over. Um, and then in this world, the elves had uh, like would, would have the skulls of their dead um and then like be able to talk to them so uh i made a pact with the uh the skulls uh, Mm. because it was a half elf right so these were two different things but with the the moon god was okay with it um the the empire god was less okay with it but that's that's part of the shifting thing so there are two parallel things where they were just like yeah okay you can you can talk to each other Mm -hmm. um if so that gets into if you want to do that where it's supporting sort of two facets of your character um or if you want it to be something where they're like being pulled between these two entities then um that's totally those are totally cool options but i also think you're perfectly it's perfectly reasonable to kind of have them be similar sources Mm -hmm. um or to have those be similar sources and have those be in conflict if you have a you know, an oath that's related to uh, Ilmater, and then you have a warlock pact with uh, one of Ilmater's archons, then I don't know how Ilmater's going to feel about that. I think devotion is the default paladin. 
That uh, sounds right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I started oh, playing Abigail her the, when it was yep. a play test, so a right. lot of the things I don't, I, I have the wrong names for anyway. So. Uh, well, recall Freely was a bard paladin warlock sorcerer, so... <laughs> And he was wholly unaware of the source of his power. Like he didn't intentionally make a make a vow. He didn't he didn't intentionally make a pact. He just could do things that he himself never understood. Um it is I think it, it is it does come down to how you want to how you want to play the character. Um I think it makes more sense if they're rowing in the same direction, but if you want to play someone that is very heavily conflicted, especially if I think the only way it makes sense. Well, there's two ways. Honestly, you could do it. You, I, I was going to say that you need to have made the oath and then something comes along and wants to kind of like tempt you Anakin Skywalker style down in the uh, negative path. Good. <laughs> but the exact opposite can also be true where you already cut this bad deal and now you're trying to do the right thing. And that's oh. why you made the paladin oath. Um, you could even I, do the backwards of that where you're like a bad paladin. And then like a mm. celestial warlock's like, do you want to get this job done in a better way? Oh, whoa. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those are all fun. I like there's that all, idea. There's always oath breakers too. Yeah. So uh, there, there's there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. Uh, I mean, fifth edition very intentionally moved away from uh, class restrictions and things like that. So you can kind of make it make sense however it makes sense to you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah so. More room for story. Mm -hmm. One one of, one of my players we're, we're we're gearing up to do our uh, get back to our fifth edition game, and uh, one of my players is already uh, barred. And warlock and he's like I th i'm thinking about adding paladin but i feel like i'm gonna be starting to rip off b dave <laughs> give it to me baby give it to me baby. Hey, i did what i did with freely to prove it could be done okay not to be the only one who did it so have at it there you go uh, i will say i need a character now and i'm gonna name this character aaron who is a <laughs> paladin cleric warlock all in service of the exact same day. <laughs> yeah. You do what you want. Well, uh, yep. <laughs> so, so the next one from that episode uh, comes from, uh, oh God, and I apologize for the, the, if you hear construction sounds across the street, it's apparently deciding it's construction time. Um, this is from uh, Lycanus21. Uh, if you could make a new pact, what would you choose? They uh, say that they would choose a dragon pact. That would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. I, you know, what I wish there was, was like um, kind of with the, the old vestige pact. Because there's lots of gods throughout the Forgotten Realms history that are sort of depowered. But if you could make... Now, that's one where I like it better because this is a cod that can't have clerics anymore. So, But they maybe still exist and they maybe still hold on to their own little plane or demi plane. Like making a pact with that kind of entity seems really interesting um, because you're almost a worshiper, but not quite. So are you helping to repower up this God um, or is this sort of like a mutual parasitism kind of thing? Um, so I wish there was something like that because I really mm -hmm. like it when it's connected to another plane personally, mm. as I've yelled about multiple times. Well, it's oddly enough, what I was going to say is one that is almost more um conceptual and is like expressly just connected to a plane like sorry i'm still not over this cold thing y'all i apologize uh where it's just like i'm just hooked into the plane of fire you know what i mean yeah. like yo like, this that's I where really i was gonna really go like like, yeah, yeah like like, just, like an ah. like an elemental warlock <laughs> yeah like mm. and, and hey we could finally have a warlock with fireball <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that a lot because it, it would be like you're just you're kind of like you you're stealing electricity from the neighbor you just plug in. <laughs> I mean they're not maybe they're not gonna notice. Maybe you could yeah. even like have a couple of plugs feeding in, right? You've just plugged into these different elemental plugs. You're like Avatar State, yep, yep. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you went with the Avatar. I was thinking more uh like a character like uh Raven from the Teen Titans, but like you're plugged into the negative in, uh, energy plane or uh <laughs> Uh, Miroku from Inuyasha with the wind tunnel. You know what I mean? You're like, I got this one thing and it's killing me, but here we go. <laughs> wind tunnel. Yeah, right. 
like I, I know I know a lot of people would be like, oh, but what about like when the pact comes calling? Like they 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 love that sort of thing with warlocks. And I think what would be neat with an elemental warlock is instead of it being like like what you're saying, like you just hooked up and you're stealing the electricity from them. But when you do that, it maybe there's like a wild magic version yeah. of this where like there's a chance where an elemental pops out into existence because you pulled on that plane too much. Yeah, it needs to it needs to cost you something. Like yeah. something comes to plug the hole or, you know, you uh every every so often you're just trying to sleep and everything catches on fire. You know, I mean, I think that's the um you have to find another connection point cuz they unplug you. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. also think I really wish that they there was a way to separate the fiend pact into like a devilish pact and a demonic pact because it is entirely too organized for a demonic pact and there should be something <laughs> they should get something cool. Mm. chaotic and dangerous yeah yeah like Gratz, like Gratz cool. is like bro 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 come be my warlock bro yeah <laughs> i'll let you right. cast natty ice at a first level spell yeah you cast eldritch blast it's like a beer pong <laughs> <laughs> it's just a spray of room temperature natty ice is what comes out of your hands. That smells weirdly of Axe body spray. Oh, God. <laughs> like, Sariel's everywhere. Like, <laughs> Wow, you know what I just realized? Gra Gratz would make the, the good place joke. It's an Axe body spray that smells like the, how the trans mover, Transformers movies make you feel. <laughs> how do you smell loud and confusing? <laughs> yeah, very emotional. You're very emotional. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> okay, we're we're gonna skip ahead to to episode thirty eight, the deck of many things and wish. This is when we were talking about uh, uh, Elliot Tumblestrum. Uh, mm, right, the one, we're talking about the one. <laughs> it's, ne it's, never away. it's never far away. It's never far away. It's never far away. I just uh, I, I would as much as I just like randomly reach out and grab props. Like this is not a large space here. I just have. <laughs> It is very I understand ready. you fundamentally. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I just got things right do, here. But, do I but, want but, an yeah. Xbox controller? Do I want a keyboard? Do I want a yep. lightsaber? You know, yep. we got we got entertaining. Do you want um, to build a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> this comes from Ryan Hayden. Uh, question: Is it possible to use wish to change someone's alignment? "Quote: I wish Tiamat was now lawful good." So, in the strictest technical sense, yes. In the strictest technical sense, Wish can do absolutely anything. Um, but, I mean, they've definitely powered it down in 5th edition versus previous editions of the game. Where, if you again, if you see any of my charity one-shots of the games I run, I still very much run it like the Twilight Zone monkey paw version of the thing. <laughs> where if somebody wished Tiamat to become lawful good, I would let that happen. But she still w would be like a tyrant. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, I still want to rule everything from a place of love now. You know what I mean? Like, I realize I was it's wrong. for your own good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I look at all the harm I've caused. I'm going to make it right. Do what I say. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it wouldn't solve your problem. Um, I would say, in general... Um, there's a uh, there's a deck of mini, um, uh, a, a draw from the deck that makes your alignment change. Yo, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I would, I would <laughs> pick a card, Tiamat. Yeah, pick, pick exactly. a card, Tiamat. Pick the middle one. Pick yeah, middle pick, one. pick. Would you just start <laughs> forward? It. Yeah, you're like pick one for each head, like Hiram McDaniel. Oh, um, hey, Cipher, tears here. Hey, Cipher. Hey, Cipher. Hey. Um. So, uh, yeah, but we need to get Tiamat a purple head, like Hiram <laughs> McDaniel. Um, oh my God! But, yes. <laughs> all I of these it. angry heads, and then this just really nice, slow talking Southern guy is just like, "I'm just here to have a good time." Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, I, 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 I would say you probably shouldn't use that on a player character, just because you know taking away people's agency gets weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, besides that, the strictest technical sense, yes. But probably not like you think it's gonna go. Yeah. Yep. Um, Storyteller Mars, hey Mars, uh, asked, uh, "What I'm curious about is the history of the deck of many things. Like, how did the magic item come to exist within the D and D sphere? Do we know that one? I don't know I if mean, they've actually written that. Good it goes back to second edition, I think. Um, the so second edition. That that's the answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the forbidden edition." Um, <laughs> Uh, I appreciate we both are like to our research material. <laughs> Although, 
There, first, there had to be no, one we oh, had to look up. Wait, this was the first mention of it was in third edition. Uh, I, I remember, actually, I remember us talking about this because I was like, it was there from the beginning and you were like, it wasn't. And oh, I'm like, yeah, but that was still like 20 uh, years ago. Mm. Ugh, oh, don't like it. Don't like it. <laughs> this is like, well, uh, 19... It's also really- 2003 Nin- was like five or six years ago, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, no, well, this no, was no, last no, decade. There, no, no, there, there was a. That's true. There was, there was. Oh, sorry. Yes, um, <laughs> but there was, there was a reference to it in 1989. So no, that's about the time that I was. That's second edition time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, every public enemy fan out there. I'm like 1989. <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> okay. But I, yeah, I don't think that there is a canonical way that it came into existence. It's just a magic item that existed, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah, it, it goes. I mean, I appreciate that nobody even knows when it appeared in the game. But I imagine D and D has just been a long con to get the deck of many things to like <laughs> into the world. That's it. That's all. It, it's been playing us this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I think an easy answer is our is the tagline for the Whoa. show. Oh, actually, oh. okay, so this says the deck of many things first appeared in Greyhawk in 1975. That sounds, that sounds better. That version has 18 cards corresponding to the ace, king, queen, and jack of each suit. And then it does appear in the original Dungeon Master's Guide 1979. That one is in Pax 13, oh. more rarely 22. That does sound more betterer. More betterer. Also, mm. uh, having the cards that seem like they're good but are actually terrible is very much a first and second edition. I was going to say, yeah. like, it feels like old D&D more, so I and was it's, surprised. Especially with the, the alignment change, because there was that stuff in Tomb of Horrors. Mm. Um, I, I, I always assumed that those came around around the same time. Especially because back in those days, pending how your alignment changed, you could lose your powers and yep. like no longer be your class if you were the wrong alignment. Yep. Wild. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, the next question <laughs> comes from episode 42, Agaron's Day, but I don't know how we got onto this topic. Uh, Agent Anol says, uh, how to beat a vampire? Wrong answers only. Love. <laughs> <laughs> uh Down i'm going to say i'm going to say a silver uh, no a uh, a regular non-silver spoon that has recently been used to eat captain crunch that's my Neck, answer necking <laughs> <laughs> oh god sitting through a rom-com marathon uh <laughs> a triangle with a werewolf oh oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh boy at least uh, one werewolf <laughs> so um this one i just thought i thought would be a, an interesting one but i don't quite i don't quite know what they mean but this this came from episode 43 under dark factions uh this is from uh selen drasama yeah i'm gonna go with that aaron if there is an underdark in both worlds oh oh they're talking about uh um a beer um, oh yeah, yeah okay if there's an underdark in both worlds, does that mean that there are underdark dragonborn? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think underdark I mean, dragonborn sound like a nightmare and I love it. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a cool idea, but it does also kind of go to like, well, there's dragonborn in Toril. Are there dragonborn that, that have uh, societies in the underdark? Not canonically that I know of. So I mean, there's a lot of places they could live. However, in a beer, there's terrible da- dragon tyrants uh, that, you know, there's an ongoing, like, push to, to overthrow. So where's a good place to uh, hide from the gigantic dragon, potentially, in the Underdark? It's fair. See, n- now, now I need dragonborn from the Shadow Dark that are just like goth kids that look like juggalos. They're all like black and white. And I love it. Yeah. They, they come out of the underdark. It's not a phase. Yeah. <laughs> Who I am. <laughs> yeah. The lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I'm a uh, warlock of the negative energy plane. So uh, so the person that has that question is actually in chat. It says, Trevor, it is sell and draw Sama. So thank you. Mm. <laughs> I'm happy you're here so you can do your question. I was, about, I was about to say that it sounds like the verbal component of our uh, one of our chess codes. It, does, uh, it really does. Something. Um. Okay. Um. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this this last one because that gets us to the episode fifty mark. 
Okay. Um, and then I'll hop over to questions from this episode. This is from episode forty six. Questions about questions. Yo questions dog, about yo. questions. Uh, episode forty six. The Feywild. Rex Verde asks question. Uh, what role do hags play in the Feywild? How do they get along with the courts? Uh, poorly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How do hags get along with anybody? Well, I, I don't want to give up too much of the story of the Wild Me on the Witch Light if you haven't played it, but um, this is disgusted land than the Wild Me on the Witch Light. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That is fair. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just now looking up the questions for the first time. Um, I'm going to jump around on this one. I'm going to give the first one to Ryan Hayden. Question, Real Housewives of Waterdeep win. <laughs> I need you to know. I forgot about that. I've That's tried so, so hard to make that a thing. I haven't given up, but I need you to know. <laughs> I've tried so hard <laughs> to make that a thing. We'll just do it ourselves. So, so, so my my we'll just wife turn this into that. My it's wife true. after that episode, she comes up and she's like, "I know I only know B Dave through you, but like, if that happens, I need to be in that." <laughs> That's it. That's it. Here's the thing. Like, I, I, wait, hang on, Aaron. If mm -hmm. either if I I know personally my, what I think would happen. But if Farida or Havilar had to settle down and become a real housewife of Waterdeep, which one of them would it be? <laughs> See, I... Okay, so... There's some <laughs> geog geographical issues here. Havilar would have to be in the Real Housewives of Cormier spinoff. Mm. Mm. And she would not change even a tiny bit. <laughs> except her dresses would be fancier. Yes. So it would be like, let's all have white wine and dish. And oh she'd be like, cool before or after the sparring session. Or during. <laughs> let's just do during. Eric, J. McCann yielding in the chat said it would be Mahen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wow. love that. <laughs> that that's actually probably accurate. -ish. <laughs> Can't top that. Um, okay. Uh, I, I appreciate this person. Uh, shiny thing underscore says comment. Thank you. Uh, hi, over the last month, I've binged every episode of the podcast. Well, thank you. Oh, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> so sadly, I've regularly missed the forbidden dance. Um, <laughs> Well, see now I can't, I can't i was about to say i can't do it on on command like, that, but although the, it, it, there were there it happened at the beginning yeah, it's it's true. True. He danced. Yeah. that's true uh and i'm up to episode 11 of writing about dragons and uh, writing about dragons things. and stuff thank you things. thank you uh dragons and things the episode on the blood war ended up giving me a supernatural noir detective story idea hey. and B Dave's regular interjection that quote, the time's going to pass anyway, uh, will, uh, ah, <laughs> it got unbolted and I lost right. What's the time's going to pass anyway. You might as well use it, uh, is the thing that means I keep finding little bits of time to write in amongst work, childcare and study. Thanks y'all. Thank you. There it is. That's why we that. do what we do. Yay. Heck yeah. Uh, so let's see. This one is uh, uh, Jay McUnyolding again. Uh, been meaning to ask, what's the policy for off-topic questions during the Q and A segment? Uh, I've had lore questions uh, that's been bugging me, but I don't know <laughs> if uh, they'll uh, ever cover relevant topics. I mean, you can always ask the questions because it might give us topic ideas. Yeah. And you can always like put in the chat a topic suggestion, and uh, and we and we might do that. Yeah. Um, and then Jay McGinnion comes back and says, question, uh, I know some real world mythologies have a place in Faerun, like Egyptian and Norse. Uh, Celis follows, uh, or Celis follows Tyr after all. Oh, well, I mean, Tyr is, you know, in there. Um, how exactly do they fit in and how do you all use them in your own games? I mean, I only ever did it with the um, any of the stories in Celestia when they're all like, you know, well, they're over there. If you go looking for them, it's like, okay. I mean, personally, I, I know in uh, Heroes of the Plains, there was a whole Thor and Loki thing that Todd did. I, I, I say, <laughs> that, I mean, we did so many different streams with those same characters. I'm pretty sure it was Heroes of the Plains. It was um, one of those. Yeah. For me, uh, I, I mean, the... 
the the gods native to this universe are interestingly enough that I don't personally feel the need to be like and also here's what Ra thinks about all of yeah. this but I mean, but you can you know you yeah. can hmm. so the promise sort of a forgotten realms the forgotten realms are like the places that this used to be connected to so a lot of the sort of explanation for those gods being here is that they are from earth or you know planes related to earth and they've bled over or part of them has mm -hmm. in the case of the mulharandi pantheon which is you know kind of an egyptian pantheon the untheric pantheon which is a sort of mesopotamian akkadian pantheon um and and for some of them too like i don't think like agma is a um, celtic god um mm -hmm. but in forgotten realms i don't know that they ever say hey agma isn't from here originally so there mm -hmm. are ones like that where there's they're clearly taken from a real world mythology yeah but they're sort of like la, 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 they're here now and they're different um, but then you also have these stories where like um, the gods of Unther basically were pulled over when um, the, I think it's the Imaskari, like reached into earth and stole a bunch of Shumerians. And at some point the gods went, hold up a second, where did <laughs> our people go? And sent their avatars into uh, Toral to see what was up and save mm -hmm. those people. Um, so you can do things like that because there is this acknowledgement baked into the setting that this other world exists and things can come here from that. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it's that. I haven't actually ever used them in a game, um, but I did use uh, some Untheric gods in, um, well, that's actually, I guess not true because my Dragonborn dating game has some Untheric gods in it. But anyway, I, yeah. I've only used it, uh, oh God. I was going to say canonically Elminster has been to earth and gone to the mall. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I've only used real world gods once and that was for a character because I decided to give myself the challenge of I'm going to play a man from Ireland. And so I wrote this entire backstory that uh, nobody read uh, about how this dude from Ireland ended up in uh, Faerun. And it was this whole thing with the Tuatha Dé Danann giving him an, an, an artifact to hide from the Fomorians and stuff like that. So I did it that way. Uh, but yeah, most of the time it just comes down to if a player is going to use them. Sure, why not? But uh, I don't go on my way for it. Um. Oh, God, what's this? Fool's Genius 89 question. B Dave, uh, what is your favorite Easter egg you slipped into any of your DM outings on stream except the obvious Orca's boombox? That one's the best one. That is the best one. Ooh. I, I, I loved recently when I was editing Black Dice Society when uh, they were all coming back from their other adventures and poor Nico was just like, oh yeah, there was something about the Raven Queen and Orcas. I think he has a crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah! <laughs> he is yep. on our team! Yep. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that probably. Honestly, yeah. I... <laughs> I, I try to weave all these things together as often uh, as I can and like make mentions and allusions to things, even though sometimes it causes me problems. Like I told the story where Asmodeus killed Bahamut because Bahamut, Bahamut's dumb. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Nahara was there to see it and then Nahara came back. But I mean, I kind of gave myself a little wiggle room of I was like, did that happen or was that just a dream? I don't know. But anyway, you know. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> um let's see uh rex verde uh says question if there is a part of Faerun that you would uh, is there a part of Faerun that you would love to see an update to um i mean a lot of the really problematic parts like yes the non-specifically asia part the non-specifically um uh middle eastern part that they just kind of wiped away mesoamerica yeah i mean they facelifted chult poorly um so i i i don't think any of that's gonna happen i think it was an experiment with chult that didn't go well and now mm -hmm. they're just gonna be like there's stuff over there if you want to go there go there yeah um yeah that yeah uh, mo most as, as like in terms of like just things changing i just do that naturally with my games because all of my D, &D games take place in the same universe so if somebody does something to boulder's gate that's there now mm-hmm I would say Cormier and Timanther, but only if I got to do them because <laughs> if not, I'd probably be sad. That's fair. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, well, I mean, this, this is a similar one, <laughs> kind of the opposite direction. Foolish Genius 89 question uh, for each of you. If you could delete one thing from the canon, what would it be? Uh, the race is not getting along. I have always hated that since I've played D&D. That was an inheritance from um, uh, Lord of the Lord Rings. Of the Rings. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it always annoyed me. I mean, for me, uh, everything with Chult. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. Except the zombie T Rex. We'll take that. No, we'll keep put it over that. there. Yeah, keep we'll take that. that. We'll drop that a, over here. It could be a jungle Just island full of that. like zombie dinosaurs. Yeah. Right. Make that the pillar you build around. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Aaron? I don't know. My head is spinning. <laughs> uh, my petty, petty answer is fireball should go around corners equally. <laughs> i'm with you on this i love that doesn't know uh, how to make a right turn it should make a right turn and a left turn when it goes into the room i'm just saying <laughs> um all right well wow we are already uh almost out of time i did not even notice that <laughs> what happens when yeah. you're t when you're being uh tangerino I uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think I think I'm gonna uh, leave off on this one. Uh, and yes, it is completely self indulgent, but I don't care. Rex Verde says, "Question: Do any of you know uh, have any idea how much joy the three of you bring me every week? Thank you for the show. Aww. Thank you. Uh, I know so how nice much joy Trevor and Aaron bring me, so I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Dead out. Yeah." Um, yeah, I, I think that is uh, where we're going to stop this one. Thank you so much, for, uh, everyone, for asking questions over our 73 episodes. And thank you for asking questions today. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I got a request for the people. Okay. You know, we, 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 episode 75 is coming up. What should we do for episode 75? Because I feel like Ooh. we'd be remiss if just by the luck of the draw, it's this Verf Nablin episode or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we should do a something, you know what I, I mean? I'm, so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to spoil myself and see what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, should probably, we should probably find something else. <laughs> I'm so curious. Yeah, you're gonna tell us after. Wait, put it in chat. Put it in chat. Put it in chat. Put in chat. Um, here, no, here but, our chat. Our chat, the, right yeah, here. Yeah, it, it's only been, like this isn't a bad topic. It's just sure. like you know, for 75. Sure. Uh, we 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 should maybe find something else. So yeah, let let us know. Uh, put your suggestions uh in the chat with like champions of lore or something like that, so we can take a look at it. Uh, or tweet them at us. Um, yep. Because that, that that would be interesting to see. Yep. You got two weeks to come up with some dope. Uh, all right, uh, friends, where can people find you and what awesome things are you working on? You can find me on Twitter at Aaron M. Evans. You can join me with these guys on our podcast, writing about dragons and shit. A uh, new episode every week. I think it's, a, it's coming today or tomorrow. Uh, oh, no, today. Yeah. Today. Yeah, already out. You. you can yeah. also watch me on uh, twitch.tv slash dungeon scrawlers uh, every, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Or Dungeon Scrawlers, an actual play show with a bunch of fantasy writers. And I know I've mentioned before, my new book, Empire of Exiles, is up available for pre-order now. Um, but specifically, I found out today, Barnes & Noble is having a 25% off sale on all pre-orders. So if you like to get your books from Barnes & Noble, I highly recommend that Do you it. get that book today. Or I think it. it's going till Friday. Um, so you can save a little money. Yeah. You know, uh, I'd already pre-ordered it, and now I'm just going to go pre-order it again. <laughs> <laughs> I can have my reading copy, and I can have my display copy. Uh, B-Day Walters, tomorrow, the first ever D&D &D Direct, 9 a.m. Uh, we're going to announce all the things. Uh, all and the then things. tomorrow night at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, Black Dice Society, the final <laughs> confrontation with Strahd Von Zarevich. <gasps> oh, and really? Right oh, yes. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't know it was going down like that. All right. Oh, oh, it's going down tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yep. It's uh Oh, I'm excited. It's gonna be rough. Yep. I love I love that you proved even more the reaching off screen for things <laughs> just with that. <laughs> you see, I didn't go very far either. You see, no. it's just like no, no, no. I love it. All right here. Yeah. <laughs> like that Muppet pilot on Farscape. <laughs> 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 
Love it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Trevor. There's an A hiding in there, uh, as well as anywhere the All Champions community is, because I'm the community manager, and that's where I'll be. Uh, let's see. Thank you to Jordan for moderating the chat today and doing a fantastic job. Uh, and thank you to Lauren for producing the show and always doing an amazing job and making sure this uh, stream runs better than when I was. I did it. The names are a lot better now because of the, I didn't do them. Uh, <laughs> I will say that chess code. Every time I read it, I just thought it's saying Lore come at me like every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's see. Uh, you should uh, make shirts that say that. Right. That is. That is it. New uniforms. Uh, big things for today. One, definitely update your game in five minutes at noon because there's some cool things that are coming to the game today. But most importantly, coming to the game today is Dottie the Dandelion, a familiar that you can purchase to help uh, donate money uh, to an awesome uh, charity for Earth Day. So uh, please be sure to check that out and donate if you can. Uh, and you get a really cool, little adorable familiar. Uh, and uh, to celebrate Dottie's release today at 5 p.m., uh, we're going to have a special game called The Pair Passage, uh, run by Lauren Urban, uh, our awesome producer, uh, and it will have uh, uh, Hope Laville, uh, Eugenio Vargas, uh, Sean Wall, and myself. Um, and uh, we're going to be having some fun playing D and D and celebrating Dottie's release. So come check that out. Uh, but that is going to do it for this week's episode. So until next week, champions out. <laughs>